Hi, I'm Cheryl Brunette, and today I'm going to introduce you to the tubular cast on. It's stretchy, it's handsome, and it's a very good skill to know. This is certainly not the only way to do a tubular cast on, but it's the way I like to teach it because you can actually see that you're starting with a tube at the bottom of your knitting. And today we're going to look at a one by one rib version. You start with what's called waste yarn. And it's waste because you're gonna throw it away later or, or rip it out. And a smooth contrasting color to your main yarn is what you're looking for. Notice that this has, this is much um, lacier than the bulky that I'm using up here. This is actually a DK cotton weight and I used it on size 10 and a half needles and the fact that it was smaller was, work, will work to my advantage as you'll see later. So when you do a one by one rib and I like to have an odd number of stitches when I do a one by one rib because I like to begin and end with a knit. If it's a single piece that isn't going to be seamed there's a symmetry to that that I like and if it is going to be seamed I like to put those end two stitches do a mattress stitch that comes up the center of each of them and it makes a perfect little seam that looks like just another one of your knits. So I want in this piece I'm going to just I want 15 um, stitches to do my knit one purl one rib and you start by casting on with your waist yarn one half of the stitches that you ultimately want. Well I can't cast on seven and a half stitches so I just up it to eight stitches and then I did three rows of the waist yarn. I, I cast on, you can see my cast on here, and then I knit a row, purled a row, and knit a row. This is just stock and knit stitch. And I wanted to end on this side, a purl side. You want to begin your main yarn with a purl side. And I did four rows of stock and knit. This is, and four is pretty typically what you use to make your tube. You're going to take these little four rows and you're going to basically pull them up and make a tube like that at the bottom of your knitting that you will eventually turn into knit one, purl one rib. So I did a purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one row, which leaves me on the purl side. And now we're going to do, we're going to form the tube. And you do that by purling the first stitch. And then you go down here and see these little pearl smiles. They're the ones that are facing downward. They're really easy to see because you've got this contrast color. You go down and pick up the first one. You're entering from behind. So when you bring it up on the needle, you need to knit it through the back of the stitch. So pearl one. And go down and get the next little smile right there lift it whoops and knit through the back of that stitch purl one pick up the next stitch it's it's easiest to pick it up from the top rather than from underneath if you picked it up from underneath you wouldn't have to knit through the back of the stitch but this access is so much easier. Purl one. Knit through the back. I'm going all the way across this row because once you get to the very end, this one's a little bit tricky to pick up. You need a little bit more yarn here. Here's a purl one. And then, see this last little guy? You have to pull that stitch out a little bit to find the last little one. Pick that up. We split it, but I'm going to compensate. Knit that and purl one. And that should give me my 15 stitches with knits on this side beginning and ending. And now all I'm going to do is follow the pattern for a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. As established, you can see that you've got a knit one, purl one 
knit one with a little bit of a split stitch, <laughs> purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way across. And what I and you just make it for the length that you want. And I already did this sample over here. This one has I forget how many rows on it, um, but it has enough. Let's just say that we've done that enough. It's a regular knit one, purl one rib, and. Now what are we going to do with this waist yarn? There's a little tube. Do you see it kind of folded over on itself there? Now we're going to remove the waist yarn. And you have a couple of choices. Um, you can just pull it out. We, knitters have all kinds of picky things around, right? So you can just pick it out like this if it's a, a short one. But if you have a long piece, it's probably not going to be very comfortable to, or it'll be really tedious to pick it all the way out and the reason it's waste yarn in the first place is you're going to get rid of it. So you can go ahead and especially look at how, how handy this is to have such a thin yarn and such a great contrasting color because I can just go in there and cut some of those stitches without cutting my main yarn. You have to be careful not to cut your main yarn. You know, I've even used um, braided fishing line for this. <laughs> not with such a heavy yarn, but with a, a finer yarn I have and then just pull out those pieces. And look what you end up with. Whoops, whoops, that last one's wrapped around a little bit. So we'll get it. This, um, this is Lamb's Pride Bulky, which I love working with Lamb's Pride. Um, I just don't like, I don't work with Bulky very often. Now look at that edge, look at that. It seems to just disappear. The knits just kind of flow right around on both sides. It's very elegant. Here's, here's another sample. I have all these little pieces around here. Here's another example of a one by one rib. And look at, this was done with a long tail cast on. Look at the difference. So it's just a different look. You see this sometimes in good commercial um, knitwear. And this, when you pull it, you have a definite end. That's as far as it's going to pull. This is not really an infinite pull. It does not want to pull as widely as the rest of the stitches that you have, but it just has the right amount of elegant um, kind of grabbing or, or pulling together so that it's perfect for the top of a top-down sock. Or how about if you're making a hat and you start at the rib that goes around your face and you go up from there, you don't have um, the really limited thing that you, the limited edge that you have here. There you have it. There must be 50 or more cast-ons but you don't have to know all of them. You just need to know a handful so that you can use them for different applications. And the tubular cast-on, not only is it handsome and stretchy and all of those things, the other charm of it is that it has an identical twin, the tubular bind-off, that looks exactly like the cast-on. And that's what we're going to look at next episode. So, until I see you again, be brave. Be brave with these new skills and enjoy your knitting. The tubular bind off, which is a person. <laughs> no, it's not a person. Um, it's the skill we're gonna meet next time, but just, okay, let's start again. <laughs>